Dave Prubeck. Now that's a household name. Everyone knows Dave Brubeck. One of the most popular names in music, not just jazz, because his music goes well beyond jazz. He had a kind of a curious journey too. Let's see. He was born in 1920 in Concord, California. That's a good place. Not far from San Francisco, right there in the Bay Area. Oakland's not too far away. Man, that's a good place to, you know, develop from jazz chops. Except his father had other ideas. His father wanted to be a cattle rancher. And cattle rancher he was. They moved out to a huge, huge farm. Ranch. 45,000 acres or something like that? So father could pursue his dream and his fortune. And of course, young Brubeck had to go with him. And there he is, working on the farm, counting the chickens and hogs and pigs and cows and all that. Now, he had played piano uh, when in Concord, taking piano lessons. But way out there on the ranch, there, there weren't too many people out there playing piano. I think his mother played piano. She actually started him, but even that was inconsistent. So for many, many years, the piano became kind of a secondary thing he did for fun. Maybe playing with friends in a little band or playing for himself or entertaining family members or whatever, but never a serious thing to the point that when he left the ranch to head into uh, San Francisco area for college, he actually went in as a veterinary science major. Yeah, um, that's what he was gonna do. Be trained to go back and help breed stronger animals for his father's ranch. Except once he got there, he started playing with little groups and going into clubs and listening to this music. And within a year, he was no longer gonna be a veterinarian. He changed his major to music and started playing little jazz gigs around and playing in little jazz clubs and found some success at it. So he never went back to the ranch. And one of his theory professors was Darius Mild, who everyone knows in classical music, you talk about a major icon. And of course you go, oh, he probably told him, give, away the, give, up, give up that jazz, just do classical. Oh no, he didn't. He told him, continue the jazz. Because he's a the European, they have a different idea about music. And so continue the jazz he did, but he infused it with ideas from classical music and some of the compositional harmonic techniques that he learned from Darius Mild. Now, as he continues to move through life, he continues to have this jazz classical, jazz classical, jazz, it's classical. And there's some people who would categorize him as a cool jazz artist. No, maybe third stream, because third stream is a combination of jazz with classical, but he was actually becoming a person whose music was becoming music of the world. I think he, ended up going on a State Department tour around the time that he had formed his great quartet and um, experienced uh, cultures in Iraq and Iran and Afghanistan, all over the Middle East, India, and he came in contact with different tonalities and most certainly different rhythmic components and different meters. The result is perhaps his most popular album, Time Out, which gave us tunes like Blue Rondo La Turk, 
and take five as two of the most popular from that album. But he continued throughout his career to work with jazz using harmonies that are borrowed from classical music and to use complex meters and compound rhythms in all of his music, some more than others. He kept his classical quartet together with Joe Morello and those guys for a number of years and when he finally disbanded it, I think he had uh, Jerry Mulligan in and uh, Alan Dawson, a few more cats, and uh, that did not last as long, and he started a few other groups, and eventually, uh, his children. Yeah, he actually had time to have children. His kids grew up, and they became his partners in making music. Uh, particularly uh, his bass playing uh, son who played in acoustic, sorry, not acoustic, played in electric fretless bass. So uh, that partnership with his boys uh, continued right to the end of his life and even now uh, his boys perform as uh, the Brubeck Legacy and I know they're performing actively as we speak. They're on tour now as we speak. Um, Dave Brubeck was also a man of peace and humanity. Uh, one of the first uh, uh, guys in the modern era to take on Benny Goodman's model, and that is to play in integrated groups, including his most celebrated quartet that featured a black bass player. Um, discontinued all through his life. I remember uh, taking a vacation down uh, to an island off um, uh, Fort Myers and uh, this little resort that I found by accident. And um, when it was discovered that I was a musician, one of the um, housekeepers um, older black woman said, oh my God, have you ever heard of Dave Brubeck? I said, oh, of course. She says, he owned a condo here. I go, really? She says, yes, he came here twice a year. Let me show you. So we took a walk and man, she talked about what a nice human being he was and how kind and generous he was and how much honor he bestowed upon her. He never looked down at anybody regardless of their station in life. Maybe that's why his music was so great. And maybe that's why he was so heavily honored, not just in jazz, but classical music. And not just in this country, all over the world. Spain, Italy, France, Germany, Great Britain have all given him national honors. And here he got an award at the Kennedy Center for a living legend of jazz. And that is just a few among the scores of awards he received over his life. His experimentation continued throughout his entire life and career as he had that very curious mind. And although he almost became a veterinarian and we almost did not get a chance to hear one note of his music, it is good to know that the power of music is so strong that even after being separated from formal study for decades, as soon as Mr. Brubeck had the opportunity to reassociate himself with live music and live musicians, both as a player and a listener, it became so infectious within his spirit and his heart and soul 
that he had to do it full time. And we in this world are better for it. I could talk about Dave Brubeck for days, but some of my lectures have been really, really long. And once again, I'm going to give this suggestion to you. No matter what kind of music you like, whether it's symphonic, orchestral, whatever, you can find that sort of music with Dave Brubeck's name on it. He wrote music, the real ambassadors about jazz legends and featured Louis Armstrong and I think uh, Carly McRae in the lead role at the Monterey Jazz Festival. He also collaborated on a composition, an oratorio, based on the words of Martin Luther King that was premiered by the Cincinnati Symphony Orchestra. So he has a wide, wide range. So no matter what you like, you can find it with Dave Brubeck's name on it. And I suggest the best way to learn about Dave Brubeck is to listen to his music and there is tons of it out there. Thank you very much.